Uh, welcome back to the Purple Cloud podcast. We've got a fantastic guest today, Professor Kim Tai Wu, all the way from Seoul, Korea, joining us today. Welcome, Professor. Hi, hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, yeah, to join the yeah this yeah podcast. Yeah, I heard about that yeah, from my friend, yeah, James Flowers, yeah, and. Uh, very yeah. nice yeah to join this yeah opportunity yeah james was one of our guests a few months ago now and uh one of my er earliest teachers but he started to introduce uh korean medicine and east asian medicine um a little bit to the west and i think very little is really known about it and this has been really your life's work for quite a long time you've done a lot of in-depth field uh, research following many doctors around so yeah. yeah i'm very curious to ask it we've got a lot of questions and a lot to cover but um yeah. Yeah. maybe maybe we could start a little bit about how how the healthcare system how, how you see it today with the how, with the western medicine and the eastern medicine and how they sit together i i had a lot of korean classmates when i was in beijing so i'm a little oh. bit familiar but yeah i um I really would like to hear your 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 in-depth perspective on on how Eastern medicine sits in the general framework in the Korean medical yeah, yeah system. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think before we touching that yeah topic, yeah, let me introduce my myself. Oh, of course, yeah. of course, we should do that. Because uh, yeah, that kind of perspective I'm looking at the Korean medicine is very important. Yeah, I'm anthropologist. Yeah. Yeah. I'm studying uh, East Asia medicine with the uh, uh, anthropological perspective uh, at doing fieldwork. And I have conducted the fieldwork, uh, of course, in Korea and China and Japan. Yeah, and uh, if I yeah, say what is my topic, yeah, I would say it it's uh, uh, East Asia medicine. And uh, especially recently, I'm very interested in uh, some epistemological and ontological background of East Asia medicine. Yeah. That's my yeah, recent topic. Yeah. I'm introducing myself because, uh, as I said, uh, uh, which perspective I'm looking at uh, East Asia medicine and Korean medicine is very important. Most and, definitely, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, especially this topic yeah, about the social and historical context is uh, very important to anthropology. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let me clarify first uh, why I used the term Korean medicine. I think uh, yeah, some of the audiences in this podcast uh, is not familiar with uh, the term Korean medicine. Or yeah, some of them would be yeah, not yeah, comfortable with that term. Yeah. But yeah, I think if we consider the social and the historical context, the, the term yeah, Korean medicine yeah, will be natural and the most fitting to refer to the East Asia medicine in South Korea. Yeah, I think uh, after this podcast, uh, yeah, the audience uh, would be more understandable. Yeah, would be more understandable about why I used yeah, that term, yeah, Korean medicine. Uh, because uh, uh, let me a little bit talk about the, how the, the institutional structure is important yeah, to understand the, uh, a medicine in a region. Uh, for example, uh, as you know, the for TCM, the TCM hospital in China, TCM hospital is the, the major healthcare institution, right? For the TCM yes. healthcare, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, on the contrary, in Japan, yeah, there are no yeah, Kampo medicine hospitals in Japan. And uh, in South Korea, the private Korean medicine clinic 
clinics are the major yeah, healthcare delivery institution for Korean medicine. So these kind of differences, institutional difference, and the government policy is very influential on the medical practice and even medical theory. So we need to consider that kind of uh, context, also the historical trajectory, the one yeah, medicine experienced in, in certain historical period. Mm. Yeah, so to talk about the uh, social context of Korean medicine, yeah, we need to talk about the, a dual healthcare system of South Korea, yeah, in which the Western medicine and the Korean medicine coexist in a parallel form. Uh, Korean medicine has, uh, as an educational system, has a uh, six-year colleges uh, in parallel with the uh, uh, six-year Western medicine colleges. And uh, uh, upon the graduation, the students are eligible to take the national license exam yeah. Yeah, administered by the, the, the Minister of Health and yeah, Welfare of the Korean government. Do you have any question, Dania? As I understand it, uh, the entry level requirements are quite high in Korea. Um, yeah. As I understand it, almost the same as to get into Western medicine, which uh, is quite unique, I think. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, the Korean medicine college is a uh, very yeah, prestigious institution in as an uh, educational institution in South Korea. And it is not easy, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's, it's very competitive for applicants to enter the uh, College of Korean Medicine in South Korea. And uh, this is uh, related to the, the popularity of Korean medicine. To show the, the popularity, yeah. to give you some senses of popularity of Korean medicine, I brought some pictures. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, that I took uh, yeah, during my field work. Yeah. yeah, these are pictures that I took uh, yeah, on the street of Seoul uh, and the Gyeonggi province. Yeah. Yeah, this picture yeah, shows uh, yeah, one building, and, and this is another building. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there are yeah, more than one Korean medicine clinics yeah, in this building. Yeah, in this building, there is one, this is the Korean narrow, narrows for the Korean medicine clinic, which mm -hmm. is only one. Yeah. In this building, there is one and two, and the three Korean medicine clinics. And in this building, yeah, this is located in Seoul, uh, there, there are one Korean medicine clinic and the other one here. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, this kind of picture, yeah, this kind of uh, the buildings, yeah, not rare in the especially metropolitan area of uh, South Korea, such as uh, Seoul, and Tucson, and Daegu, and Daejeon, and Gwangju. And this kind of picture, yeah, will give you some senses of the popularity of uh, the Korean medicine. And this popularity is uh, related to the, some very competitive, uh, yeah, competitiveness of, uh, for the applicant to enter the the Korean medicine colleges. And are most people practicing in private clinics like this kind of thing? And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as I said, the major care delivery institution of mm. Korean medicine is private clinics. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So let, me, let, me, let, me, let me more talk about that, yeah. The care delivery institution in South Korea. As I said, the major is uh, private clinics. And the Korean medicine has also 
private hospitals there. And uh, the other form means the university affiliates, the hospitals. So there are uh, three major yeah, care delivery institutions for the Korean medicine in South Korea. One private clinics and the private hospitals and university affiliate hospitals. And among them, uh, private clinics are the major uh, care delivery institutions. And also these three forms of uh, care delivery institution have a uh, parallel form with uh, uh, Western medicine in South Korea. And Western medicine in South Korea also have uh, three major yeah, care delivery institution. Yeah, like uh, in Korean medicine, they have a uh, uh, private Western medicine clinic and the private uh, Western medicine hospitals and the uh, university affiliated the uh, uh, Western medicine hospital, three forms. But this kind of a uh, yeah, parallel yeah, structure is, uh, I think it's important to understand the, the social context of mm -hmm. uh, Korea policy in South Korea. Yeah. yeah, and with yeah. the practice of the the medicine in these in these clinics, um, who are the customers? Is it all levels of society and economic yeah. status coming to seek these sorts of treatments? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. People and all the people, yeah, all generation. I have to say, yeah. And how does it sit? And how is it viewed uh, by some of the Western medicine practitioners? It's still pretty uh, highly esteemed and they work together or is there quite a, a gap between them in practice? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely the Western medicine is the major healthcare system in South Korea. Yeah, but compared to the other East Asia medicine and the traditional medicine in the world. I think the presence of Korean medicine in South Korea is very distinctive. Okay, that's that's really interesting. Um, I think we can maybe get into, because you've done a lot of work on the different lineages and uh, in, in Korean medicine, and this is something I don't know much about at all. It's very interesting. And some... Uh, yeah. are a little bit more modern development. Some are very old. Um, you can maybe, maybe you could introduce a little, a little bit about them and uh, talk, yeah, talk about your, your, your studies because it's, it's a huge yeah. topic from what I've, I've read in your writings. You've done a lot of research. Uh, in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have uh, published some articles about the current or lineage of Korean medicine. Yeah. But yeah, I think it, this is a very interesting story because uh, the lineage and the uh, currents or the medical society of Korean medicine is very important in uh, Korean medicine in South Korea because they have played the role of uh, educational institution shaping the medical theory and the clinical practices. And I would say that along with the, the College of Korean Medicine, the, the lineage of Korean medicine is very important for the, as an educational system and the, the how the Korean medicine is exists, Korean medicine exists in terms of how Korean medicine exists in South Korea. Uh, there are diverse yeah, lineages of Korean medicine in South Korea. Uh, the examples include uh, the lineage of uh, Dongi Bogam and the Sasang medicine and the uh, Neijing, Shanghanun, and uh, also uh, introduction to medicine. Yeah, these are all the Related to the famous yeah, classical text. Yeah, Dongi Bogam is uh, the, one of the representative of classical text 
of Korean medicine yeah, published in 1613 in Joseon Dynasty by He Jun, who was uh, a royal court physician yeah, at that time. And uh, uh, Sasang medicine is uh, a term for the constitutional medicine in South Korea yeah, proposed by the 19th century scholar physician Lee J. Ma. And the, the Sasang medicine they divide the human constitution into four categories. Taeyang, Soyang, and uh, Taeum, and Soum. And they provide the difference, differenti differentiated treatment for patients uh, according to the constitutional divisions. Are these, const are these constitutional divisions, are they something that came out of Korea or are they based, do they have their basis in earlier Chinese texts? I've always wondered about this, whether they're something that was really just developed in Korea or there's a link, uh, uh, some sort of link with the earlier Chinese works. Yeah, this is very, yeah, distinctive. Yeah, with Sasang medicine is very yeah, interesting because uh, the founder, the Lee Zema, yeah, combined uh, some theory of uh, the Confucianism and the uh, East Asian medicine. And they, he, he came up with the uh, four divisions of uh, human constitution. And it's uh, not much related to the already existing the constitutional theories in East Asian medicine. Mm. And um, yeah, the the Dong Yi Bogam. It's uh, it's a very interesting book. Uh, yeah. I was lucky enough to be given a copy at that um, the ESDAM ICDAM conference many years ago, which you also attended in Korea. And I've yeah, read right. I, I've read parts of it. Uh, maybe yeah. you could uh, talk a little bit because I don't think many in the West know about it. But it's uh, it's a very important book and very, as I understand it, representative of Korean medicine yeah, as a whole. Is it is it the court physician went out and collected all of these, yeah. all this knowledge from practitioners from all throughout Korea? Is that kind yeah, of yeah. how it yeah. happened? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a confinement of uh, the old theory and uh, the medicinal formula, formulas, yeah, up to the uh, 17th century, yeah, because this book was uh, published in 1613. And the Hojun and the, the scholars think uh, this work is not just the, the work of indiv individual person. This is a collective effort to, to compile of all the knowledge because the, the volume of knowledge is very huge. Mm. So it, yeah, it should not be the, the work of one, only one person. Uh, Hojun is a kind of a representative author. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I'm curious yeah. how it's used today in Korea. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in lineages and how, how practitioners yeah, will use this work. Yeah. The lineage, the, the interesting part of the lineage phenomena in South Korea is uh, there are uh, also the sub lineage under the domain the lineage. So I talked about the lineage of Dongi Bogam, right? Mm. Yeah. And under the, the lineage of Dongi Bogam, there are sub lineage of Dongi Bogam, yeah. Yeah, such as the uh, Hongsang Medical Society and the uh, Cause of Disease Society and the uh, Hyundong yeah, Academy. Yeah, these are all yeah, Dongi Bogam lineage, but they share yeah, separately their own medical practice and the medical theories. This is a very interesting part of Korean medicine. Yeah, for, yeah, 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 go ahead. Uh, sorry, you said it's a problem in Korean medicine? It's, you said it's a problem in Korean Inter medicine? Interesting. Yeah, interesting problem. Yeah, in what way? In what way? I'm curious. Yeah. yeah. 
interesting part of oh interesting yeah. part okay yeah yeah um sorry i i misheard you yeah, yeah. no it's it's um it is very interesting and i and I'm, so they will all have different clinical manifestations of this yeah. huge work um yeah. but all drawing from it and using using its name yeah and i brought uh, yeah, one of the uh, pictures that I, yeah, in my article published in 1914, yeah, because this, I'm showing uh, this mm. yeah, picture because this is related to the yeah, Dongi Bogan lineages. Yeah. As I mentioned, I mentioned the, the one of the sub lineages of uh, Dongi Bogan lineage is Hongsang uh, medicine, right? Mm -hmm. Some medicine has uh, some yeah, categories of uh, people. So, so these are the four four types of people, right? Yeah. The, and yeah. to tra translate in Korean, the, it's uh, the Jing Chi Shen and blood, which is right, essence right. Chi spirit yeah. blood. Um, yeah, yeah. And right. this system uh, was relatively recent is that right or is it a relatively recent uh manifestation yeah, really, of something a bit older really yeah proposed by uh the the leader yeah, the founder of the Hangsang medical society yeah. the maybe, maybe you can give some examples of maybe how it's how people would use it because it is very interesting the different facial types um, indicating it, a propensity to certain diseases, that kind of thing. This is uh, these categories are very closely related to the the contents of the Dongi Bogan. Okay. Yeah, these uh, the essence and the chi and the spirit and the blood are the the first uh, four chapters of the Dongi Bogan. Ah, right. The, okay. Yeah, in the main text, yeah. The essence and the chi and the spirit are the, the fundamental constitutions of the uh, human body. Yeah. The Dongi Bogam, yeah, emphasize the, the fundamental constitution of the human body, yeah, three yeah, constitutions. And uh, the, the founder of the medical society, Hyangsang Medical yeah, Society, added one more yeah, constituent, which is uh, blood, and he proposed the, the four categories of uh, uh, person type. And he argued uh, the, our body has uh, this kind of uh, fundamental constituents, and uh, each person has some emphasis, of, emphasis among those uh, yeah, constitutions. And uh, for example, yeah, Zhong people has uh, emphasis of uh, yeah, the Zhong essence, uh, mm. essence yeah, component. And uh, that kind of uh, yeah, emphasis uh, makes his uh, face shape be round. Mm. Yeah, these categories are uh, the Relate to the looking diagnosis that the Hyangsang Medical Society members practice. As you recognize, the, for the essence type, the person has the round face shape, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the uh, chi type has a rectangular mm -hmm. face shape. And the spirit type is kind of upside down, yeah, triangle shape. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the blood type has the oval yeah, shape of uh, face. So the practitioner of Hyangsang Medical Society, yeah, using this kind of uh, face shape uh, as uh, to identify which the basic uh, constitution of uh, Human body are emphasized is emphasized in this person, and after the identifying 
which one is which component emphasized is related to the, the their uh, diagnosis because uh, for the for example the junk type the SS type if the person uh, has uh, some health issues that issue yeah can be related to the 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 essence so mm. the yeah the person they yeah, tend to be have a health problem with the loss of uh, essence something like that yeah so this type of face shape and uh, the emphasis of uh, the components and constituents of the human body are related to the, the practice of the diagnosis in this medical society. And as I said, I mentioned the Hong Sang Medical Society and the Cause of Disease Society and the Hyundong, Hyundong Academy. And they all used the, the four diagnosis, the looking diagnosis and testing, hearing, and the touching diagnosis, all of them, but each lineage have some emphasis among those four yeah, diagnostic, diagnostic yeah, techniques. Mm -hmm. For the Hyungsang Medical Society, the looking diagnosis is important, is important. And the cause of disease society, asking, asking diagnosis is emphasized. And uh, the Hyundong Academy, the touching diagnosis is emphasized. So yeah, this, as I said, uh, even though the sub lineage is all yeah, follow the teachings of uh, Dongyi Bogam, but each society and the each lineage share their own yeah, medical theory and the clinical practices among their members. This is a very interesting part, part of a Korean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, very, uh, it is very interesting. And um, there are also other schools in Korea, as I understand it, which like you've yeah. mentioned already, actually, that uh, don't look at the Dongyi Bogam, but um, look at the Huang Di Neijing, the yeah. Shanghai Lun, so the, the Chinese books, the Han Dynasty Chinese yeah. books. Shanghai uh, no, um, yeah, Rinigi, there are also yeah, plural Shanghai Lun Rinigi. Mm. Also, yeah, more than one yeah, Huang Di Neijing Rinigi. And more than one yeah, Sasang medicine lineage. Yeah, right. This diversity is very important because, as I said, they shape the knowledge and the practice of Korean medicine, along with the College of Korean Medicine. And uh, they have, uh, uh, with the, their, there is their some competition yeah, among lineages. To provide a yeah, more efficacious yeah, practice, yeah, right? Among, yeah, Korean medicine practitioners, and so, uh, this yeah, visible and invisible. Uh, yeah, no, no. Oh yeah, I was just wondering. You said competitive, so they're more they're more likely to compete with each other rather than do they ever exchange ideas, communicate with each other? And I'm curious, will one practitioner maybe be a member of two different lineages, or if you're in a lineage, it's quite competitive, like you, like you said. Yeah, yeah, they are yeah, competitive, and uh, usually the one member yeah, continuously follow the one teachings. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, one paramedicine doctor sometimes move from one lineage to another lineage. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, basically, their competition yeah, makes or uh, uh, provide some energy to okay. Korean medicine because they try to provide uh, yeah, more efficacious treatments to Korean medicine doctors. And uh, even the outside of uh, the lineage, the Korean medicine doctors also employ 
the lineages, knowledge, and the practice. Because uh, the lineages, uh, the practice, uh, uh, some up, up to public lectures, and they have some internet yeah, lecture series mm. open to the public. Yeah. And they also publish books, right? So this kind of uh, means that they circulate their knowledge to the outside of lineage. So the paramedicine doctors uh, even don't have to, to be don't have to be the official members of one lineage yeah, to employ the, their knowledge and the practice. Right. So, yeah, this kind of uh, yeah circulating knowledge and the practice. This lineage is uh, yeah, influential in shaping theory and practice of Korean medicine today. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that the audience of this podcast uh, would be interested in acupuncture. Yeah, practice. for sure, most definitely. Yeah, and I brought some the the story of uh, acupuncture lineage yeah, in Korean medicine. Oh great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've wrote you've written an article on that as well, which is it's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, and that, yeah. It's the one article about acupuncture lineage in South mm. Korea. Yeah. And mm. uh, in I, yeah, they go away. Yeah. I was just gonna say maybe you can explain a little bit about these different these different lineages, the different yeah. time yeah. periods they draw on, this kind of thing. Yeah. yeah the, they're they are also the, the the major category of acupuncture lineage. Yeah. They include the uh, the Sam acupuncture lineage and the, the constitutional acupuncture lineage and the Neijing acupuncture lineage. And the, these are uh, the major category. And under that category, there are also the, like the the three the sub lineage of Dongi Bogam, there are sub lineage of acupuncture lineage. Yeah. The some acupuncture and the, the constitutional acupuncture and the, the Neijing the acupuncture is the, the, the one of three major, that there are other two, the other three is two, how uh, it is stated, but they three uh, major lineage of acupuncture in style in South Korea. And the Sam acupuncture, yeah, let me explain a little bit about the three major yeah, lineages. Sam acupuncture, the Sam is uh, the name, Sam is com comes from the legendary figure yeah, called the Sam. Yeah, you don't know who, it, who he is, yeah, but he uh, lived the uh, maybe middle and uh, uh, late yeah, Joseon dynasty period. Joseon dynasty is uh, uh, the one of the, the dynasty in Korean Peninsula that lasted from uh, 13, 13 or 92 to 1910. Yeah. Mm. And the Sam they lived yeah, maybe the middle or late period of the Joseon dynasty. And uh, he yeah, published, uh, not actually published, he left some yeah, theory about the uh, acupuncture. And the Sam acupuncture is uh, emphasizing the relationship of the five phases. And the influence of Sam, Sam acupuncture is very, yeah, great in, in even contemporary Korean medicine in South Korea. And the uh, acupuncture practices in South Korea usually emphasize the, the theory of notion, concept of the five phases. The, let me a uh, little bit talk about the recent, recent emerging practice of some acupuncture. In, mm. in some acupuncture, uh, they, as I said, emphasize uh, the relationship among 
the channels and also relationship among the acupoint and uh, emphasize their the characteristic of the five phases okay, among channels, among acupoint. And uh, uh, they kind of uh, the, the recently, uh, the one of the sub lineage of some acupuncture, which is called the Gumo Sam acupuncture lineage, uh, proposed, has proposed the, the Sambu acupuncture. The Sambu acupuncture is uh, related to the original form of uh, Sam acupuncture, but yeah, it's a little bit different. And uh, we can say this is a different kind of style, even though it emphasized uh, the notion of uh, five phases, uh, they emphasize differently. In uh, some acupuncture, original some acupuncture, the relationship, the five phase relationship among the channels are very important. But the recent, uh, recently emerging acupuncture style, which is called the Sambu acupuncture, emphasize the, the characteristic of uh, five phases on one acupuncture. Mm. We get, yeah, if we take the, the BL66 point, mm -hmm. it's a uh, Ju Chongu, is that right, Daniel? Uh, it's the bladder, you said bladder 66, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's Ju called uh, Shugu in Chinese. Uh, so, no, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, Zutonggu, Zutonggu, that's yeah. right, you're right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Zutonggu, yeah, the point has uh, the Sambu acupuncture theory argues the Zutonggu point has a water, water, water characteristic am among the five phases because uh, the acupoint uh, is uh, located on the great yang bladder channel, right? Mm -hmm. And the great uh, great yang has a uh, division of five phases uh, has a characteristic of uh, water phase. Mm -hmm. The bladder, yeah, of course, has the the water characteristic among five phases. And they, in some acupuncture, the, they usually employ the five transporting. Five transporting acupoint. They are located the, the, below the elbow and the, below the knees. And they, the some acupuncture employ those yeah, acupoint as mm -hmm. they make the, the point. So in the five transporting acupoint, also they have uh, the characteristic of uh, five phases. And uh, the Jutongu BL. Sixty-six has uh, the water characteristic among those uh, yeah, transporting points or uh, characteristic. So the BL sixties has water, water, water characteristic. So the acupuncture theory uh, use that kind of characteristic in their treatment of a patient. Yeah, for example, if the patient has uh, some problem, issue, health issue with uh, the fire, the practitioner would uh, manipulate the uh, acupoint uh, with the uh, uh, metal and uh, water characteristic yeah, by stimulating or supplementing that point with uh, water and metal the practitioner, yeah, try to kind of reduce the problem with the, the fire or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And this is, uh, uh, I, I was talking about the one sub lineage of some acupuncture, which is the uh, more, yeah, some acupuncture lineage. And they, yeah, usually, they used to practice uh, original some acupuncture, 
but recently yeah, they proposed the new acupuncture yeah, style, which is called the Sambu acupuncture. Yeah, this kind of uh, the emerging new acupuncture practice is not there in South Korea. And this is also very interesting part of mm. Korea. Okay, and and some of the other ones, I I, I believe there's a, also a, a new one, relatively new one, based on the eight constitutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I brought also some yeah video clip. Oh, cool! Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because uh, we are using the, this yeah high technology of <laughs> Zoom. Yeah. I try to use the all functions of Zoom. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And because uh, uh, the, in the a, a, a constitutional acupuncture, you, if you visit Korea, yeah, yeah, Daniel, please visit Korea. I'd love to. Diverse. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. I'd really love to. Yeah. <laughs> I will show the all diverse Korean medicine practices. Yeah, Fantastic. Ah, yeah. And if you visit the uh, eight constitutional clinic, you immediately, you will immediately recognize their different style because uh, from the, the movement of the uh, yeah, practitioner, I will show them. Yeah, instead of uh, the video clip. Ah, yeah. oh, there we it go. Is, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 Let, let's go back to the the eight constitutional acupuncture. Yeah. This yeah. The pictures shows uh, in in this picture. This is this pictures yeah. From comes from the, the one of the articles that I published in uh, nineteen uh, two thousand sixteen. Yeah. In Asia medicine. The title of the article is uh, Tradition on the Move. Uh, in, in that article, I mentioned the uh, eight constitutional acupuncture as an emerging acupuncture style in South Korea. Mm. And the, with these pictures, I try to show the constant moving movement of the practitioner from the picture one to the picture four. Yeah, this movement uh, uh, from picture one to picture four, uh, it takes around uh, uh, 20 seconds, maybe. Yeah. So the practitioner yeah, continuously yeah, moving around. Okay. And this, yeah, moving around with the, he, he was uh, insulting needle and the withdrawal needle. Insulting. Oh. Yeah. So they, they don't leave them, but they do a lot of little, yeah. like sh very short uh, yeah, needle. Short okay. Time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this movement is uh, based on some theory yeah, proposed by the founder of a constitutional acupuncture, who is uh, uh, Dr. Gondo Won. Yeah, Gondo Won. Yeah, he yeah, proposed the, this yeah, new style of acupuncture in 1960s. And the, the, the theory he proposed was uh, uh, sending and receiving acupoint theory. And by the movement, the practitioner was uh, sending chi and receiving chi, sending chi and receiving chi. Uh, because uh, this acupuncture style also the based of uh, based on the, the theory of the five phases notion of five phases and the, the relationship between channels among channels and acupuncture are very important and as you know in the the notion of uh, the five phases uh, there are some web right yeah the five phases are also all relate to each other, right? Mm. With some kind of- Sure, web. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So if we yeah. insert the one acupoint needle on the acupoint, uh, 
the influence of needling they spread all directions, right? Yeah, kind of that kind of thing happens. So the founder, the Dr. Guondo one, yeah, argues we need to, to specify the destination of the chi the buying by the, the pointing out which part of the acupoint uh, the she needs to, need to go. So this kind of uh, uh, movement uh, in this picture, can you see the, my mouse? Is moving? Yeah, 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 I can see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This practitioner uh, by the insulting uh, leader on one acupoint uh, is Jingu. Uh, he is sending chi to the next point. And by the insulting leader on the second point, the practitioner is receiving chi. And on the third picture, also he is sending and receiving. So mm. the practitioner in eight constitutional acupuncture there are yeah, two, two. There are two set of sending and receiving. Sending, receiving point. So in a constitutional acupuncture, uh, has uh, four acupoints as uh, one set, and uh, repeating these kind of acupoint. Uh, the insert, insert needle and middle needle. Uh, the acupuncture style try to specify the destination of the chi. Mm. This is the theory called the, the sending and the receiving yeah, at the point. Right, that's very interesting. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, if you watch the video clip, it would be more interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We might try and upload that to the, the, the YouTube channel and if anyone is interested, they can have, have, a, have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, another yeah, newly emerging acupuncture acu style yeah, will be the eight, uh, nine, uh, 16, 16 forms acupuncture style. Yeah, this is uh, this, this acupuncture lineage, uh, acupuncture style is uh, proposed by one of the Neijing uh, acupuncture lineage. Yeah, this is the sub lineage of Neijing acupuncture. Uh, the lineage is called the Baiyong, yeah, Baiyong yeah, lineage. Yeah, they proposed the new acupuncture in 2000. Yeah, after 2000, yeah, this is a very, very recent, very recent acupuncture style. This is based on the, the theory of uh, the, one of the Ling Shu, the yeah. haunted Ling Shu chapters. Yeah. Chapter 64, 64 they, they brought uh, some important theory from the Ling Shu chapter 64 and uh, the theory divide the human body in the four forms. The, the ritual chapter 64, they yeah, say in our body, the chi is concentrated the, the one of the four parts in our body, which is the uh, upper, upper left part and the upper right part and the lower left part and lower right part the, with the, the belly button on the center. So if I show you mm. this kind of, yeah, four type of the body and there are some concentration of chi in their body. So it depends on the, each person. So the acupuncture style, they divide four forms of uh, yeah, body type based on the concentra concentration of uh, chi among the one of the 
the, the body parts, upper right, upper uh, left, upper left, upper left, upper right, and mm -hmm. uh, lower left, lower right. Yeah. And uh, also the lineage was influenced by Sasan medicine, yeah, the four constitutional uh, medicine. And they combined the, the Lingshu chapter 64 and the Sasang medicine. And they came up with the 60 forms because it's a four by four. Yeah. Yes. Because the Soum, Soum is one of the category, categories of uh, Sasang medicine. And the Soum person has uh, the one of the four yeah, forms. In according to their concentration chip. So they came up with uh, 60 yeah, forms of a body, body, body type. Based on that kind of uh, yeah, division, they treat the patient. This is also one of the new uh, styles of acupuncture. Mm. So, yeah, very recently, the top one. Yeah. It's interesting, but they're based on all, it's a combination of maybe some older things that have been floating about out there for a while. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I, as I mentioned in the acupuncture lineage, the majors are the Sam acupuncture and the constitutional acupuncture and the Neijing acupuncture mm. lineage. And the Neijing lineage is usually, yeah bring their theory from the Lingshu chapters mm. yeah, of Hong Kong. That's very interesting. And there is also maybe moving away from acupuncture specifically, but I'm sure they have their acupuncture styles is the Somun Society, which is uh, also a lineage, as I understand, of the Neijing of the Suwen chapters yeah, of yeah. the Neijing. Is that right? Um, yeah. I've yeah. talked with James Flowers a little bit about this, but maybe you've done some work with them as well. You could give an introduction because they're maybe yeah. very interesting to see how these, um, how they operate and how they sort of sit with these other, other systems of the, of Neijing acupuncture and this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually the Somun society is uh, uh, not actually the Neijing acupuncture lineage yeah, because they more emphasize the, the Medicinal herb treatment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I said uh, there are there there are big two categories. The one lineage and the second lineage. First lineage followed the text of uh, the classical text, uh, which is Dongi Bogan, Shangan Nun, Neijing, yeah, introduction to yeah, medicine, something like that. And the second category, there are the acupuncture lineage. And the Somun society belong to the, the lineage who follow the teachings of the Neijing yeah, in the first category. So the, the Somun society has their own lineage, actual lineage, face-to-face -face lineage. The current, current members of the Somun society today is a kind of third and fourth generation of that lineage. And they, the Somo society is very famous of their face-to-face -face lineage from their uh, founders to their teachers and the followers. In the first generation, in the first generation, the Somo society was uh, uh, established by uh, Sokok Li Kyujun. Yeah. Li Kyujun is uh, a scholar physician in the late Joseon dynasty and uh, the early colonial period. Yeah, as you know, the Korea was occupied by Japanese uh, yeah, colonial uh, government and uh, the colonial period uh, lasted from 1910 to 1945. And uh, he, Sokok, yeah, he lived in until 19, yeah, 2023, 20, yeah, that, as far as I remember, yeah, early yeah, 
period of colonial period. And he yeah, published the many books. He published many books. But there are some book of medicine. So one of them is uh, Somundeo. The Somundeo is uh, the kind of uh, uh, the compiled, compiled annotation of Huangtin Aging Suen. The Somundeo in Korean can be translated into uh, English as uh, uh, the main points of uh, inner canon or main point uh, main point of the basic questions, main point of the web. Mm -hmm. So he, he compiled the, the old 86, 81 chapters of Suen into the 25 chapters in his uh, the compiled version of yeah, Somundeo. And he put the, some his uh, argument in the sentences, under the, the sentences of uh, Beijing Suen. And uh, this book is very important for the, the members of the Somo society. Uh, there are uh, very diverse kind of uh, study group in Somo society. And uh, the, there, there are some study group organized by the headquarters of uh, some society, and uh, there are some the, the study group organized by the regional branches of some society. Yeah. Anyway, the the Somundeo is a very important book for their study and the research of medicine. And I think it's very interesting. Uh, the, interest, the interesting feature of uh, some society, how they study the Huangtin Aging Suen. As you know, uh, Daniel, you know the, the Somun the Suen, yeah, Huangtin Aging Suen is not the yeah, convenient books yeah, to employ, the directly employ to the clinical practice, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's a, text. it's a lot of theory, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around theory, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So I think it's important how they study, yeah, Suen, continuing Suen, how they apply that kind of uh, principle to the clinical practice. Yeah, this is a very inter interesting part, an important part of, uh, yeah, Soman society. Uh, the, in their study. They focuses on the they focus on the one the, if I take example as a, uh, four seasons who are four times spring and summer autumn and the winter and this kind of a concept four seasons and four mm. times if I take the the concept of the four seasons. Yeah. As an example, they study yeah, the concept yeah, very hard. Mm. And in the, the four season actually means uh, the, the kind of uh, season has uh, four different kind of uh, chi directions, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. As a uh, uh, sprouting in the spring and expanding in the summer and uh, uh, contracting in the autumn and the uh, story in the winter. And that kind of chi uh, movement, chi directions, chi directionalities are the elaborated, they are elaborated in each context, in the context of organs, in the context of the boil, in the context of the channel, something like that. And they, try to yeah, experience the chi directionality of uh, the four seasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, they try to uh, apply that kind of uh, chi directionality and how they are elaborated in each context. So how, how, how do they experience them? 
like by going to like by going to different climates and different places oh, yeah, yeah. and this kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. From my field work, anthropological field work, their their study group they called the uh, Jiri, Jiri Mountain study. Yeah, Jiri Mountain study. Right. The work, yeah, study group organized by the headquarter of the Somu Society, and uh, it was uh, called the Jiri Mountain Society because it, the study group, yeah had been held in the Jiri Mountain. The Jiri Mountain is uh, one of the national parks in South Korea. They're mm. located in the southern part of uh, South Korea. And the, the place was uh, yeah, chosen because uh, the place uh, was uh, the mountain, Jiri, is the best place to experience the, the four season. Uh, okay. Yeah, and the, the study group yeah, was uh, lasting, has lasted uh, from uh, two years, two years. And they, the participant of the study group experienced the four seasons two times. And All right. They, yeah, yeah. And they study Huangdei Neijing Suen, and they yeah, discuss how Suen described for seasons, how they describe spring, how they describe summer, they study, yeah. And uh, they experience actual spring and the summer, and they experience the, the directionality, three directionality mm. of uh, each, each season. So is the, uh, is the climate in Jilin, is it very obvious in each season, which one is which the climate is quite yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, obvious. Yeah. And uh, they have uh, some discussion session and also they have some time for the hiking. Yeah. And uh, going around the, the mountain area, they, they feel the, how the season mm. show uh, the shift directionality. And they also they discuss how this kind of feeling of this kind of chi directionality they experience the, can be applied to the clinical practice. And mm -hmm. in, this, in this background, uh, with the discussion of spring, they study the liver, characteristics of liver. Mm -hmm. And uh, from discussion of uh, autumn, chi directionality of autumn, they study the lung and the large intestine, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And and to clarify, they'll be they'll live there for two years straight each yes? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. yeah, I need I need to yeah I should have explained more background. They they are all Korean medicine doctors. Yeah. yeah. They have their own clinics. <laughs> oh yeah. okay. So they're coming sometimes and going back to their clinic sometimes. Got you. Yeah. Oh so great. Just the weekend. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I attended that uh, that study group as my field work, and they usually they gather the because Tree Mountain is, as I said, located the the southern part of the Korean Peninsula. If you have a clinic in Seoul, mm. yeah, you need to yeah travel on Friday from yeah, Seoul to Jiri Mountain. Yeah. And after cleaning hours on Friday, the practitioner in Seoul yeah, traveled from Seoul to Jiri Mountain yeah, to attend the, the lectures and the ah. discussion lesson on yeah, in Saturday morning. Yeah. So it's a kind of a three days session. Three day Friday. session. And it's yeah. mo most weekends they do yeah. this. Friday night and uh, Friday evening and uh, Saturday and the Sunday morning, and okay. they get uh, and uh, discuss have uh, some lecture session. There are some. There is uh, one teacher, yeah, who is a senior member of uh, Somo Society, and uh, uh, he has uh, a yeah, play role of yeah, play role of teacher. And there are some uh, students. Mm. I mean the learners. 
who are all uh, polar medicine doctors. And Got you. The, yeah, members of uh, the Seoul Society, whether they are in, they have a practice in Seoul or Busan, Gwangju, they go together. Yeah, and they have uh, the weekend. Yeah, study session, and I, yeah. I need to mention the, their lineage, yeah, more about them. And the first generation is the Sokok Igijun, and the second generation uh, would be the represent, represented by the, the Nui Dang, Yi Wonse. Yeah, he is the teacher, and he is also a disciple of Sokok, and the teacher of the third generation of the Somo society. The third generation is now the senior member of the civil society today. And one of the senior member uh, had to play role of a teacher in Jiri Mountain study. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. And it, so in general as well, because um, you mentioned before that it's more of a herbal medicine system. Um, yeah. is it, do people in Korea usually stick to either being a herbal medicine practitioner or an acupuncturist, or do some do both? Both, both. Oh, they do both? And then they might be a different lineage of herbal yeah. and acupuncture. Yeah, Got yeah. you. Okay, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. The, the, it's a kind of related to the license system in South Korea. Yeah. For a medicine doctor, yeah, yeah. It, it's a, their license, it's allowed to the practice of uh, herbal medicine, also the acupuncture. Okay. They combine, yeah. Combined. Got you. Okay. Fantastic. Um, on that note, we might wrap up. And yeah, I'd like to thank you for your time. You've been very generous with your time today. And it's been fascinating to uh, explore the world of Korean medicine and all the different lineages that are happening there. And it's it's quite amazing because it's something uh, in my many years in China, a lot of these lineages died out after the Republican era, I think. They, I think there was something similar, but it's really great to see that something yeah, um, yeah. is going yeah, on in Korea to, the, to this day. Me, yeah, let me finalize. Uh, sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> Yeah, why I'm trying to use the term, yeah, Korean medicine, because uh, this kind of uh, yeah, differences exist among the East Asian medicine. Yeah, I would say East Asian medicine, East Asian medicine, not singular. East Asian medicine, they are plural. Mm. We need to say East Asian medicine because. Uh, Particularly uh, after the, the modern period, after the establishment of a nation state, nation state, uh, all modern nation state, all emphasize the, the healthcare institution. Yeah. So this kind of, of thing is very visible in this uh, yeah, COVID-19 pandemic, during the COVID-19 pandemic, because the, each nation state has their own healthcare system, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how they operate is visible during the pandemic, yeah, pandemic era. So this kind of uh, yeah, event, COVID-19 pandemic, yeah, visualize the importance of uh, medical system in each nation state. They, they because of the, Modern nation state emphasize the healthcare system and how they employ its the medical system, either Western medicine or the traditional medicine. How they yeah, the the way of establishing that kind of medical system depends on the each the med, each nation state, and they have a different trajectory historical trajectory in establishing each uh, healthcare system and the healthcare institutions. As I said, yeah, in China, the TCM has uh, the major, the TCM hospital as a major care delivery institution, right? 
Mm -hmm. Korea, yeah, the private PMS clinic is a major care delivery institution. And uh, in China, the, the social state is very influential in according to the, the anthropological work, yeah, such as uh, the Bokushai with the mm. uh, Chinese continental China, something like that. The social state is very influential in contemporary Titian theory and practice. And on the contrary, in South Korea, the government, Korean government is not much influential mm. on the Korean practice, and practice compared to the yeah, Chinese government. And uh, it means there are some rules, other actors, other than states can play more in medical shaping the yeah, theory and the practice of medicine. In Korea, one of them is uh, the lineage, diverse lineage. And they play the role of uh, along with other yeah, actors. Also, the government is important in South Korea. Government policy is important. And the uh, healthcare insurance system is also important. And the uh, Korean medicine colleges are very important. And also, this kind of diverse lineages also important. That's the reason why I use the term, the Korean medicine, because uh, the context is very important. The context influence the contents of medicine today. So we yeah, should say not East Asia medicine, but East Asia medicine. Too. Yeah, got you. East Asian medicines, yeah. But yeah. it's a plurality of practice. Well, yeah, thanks yeah. for bringing our attention to all of this. And yeah. yeah, thanks again so much for your time today. And I look forward yeah. to taking up your generous offer to visit Korea. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Please be. <laughs> right. And then, yeah, me and James. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for this yeah, great opportunity. Yeah. It's my pleasure. The Korean medicine to the yeah, broader audience. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's my pleasure. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.